So as I said, I am going to talk to you about the infrastructure requirements uh, for the operating rooms, the recommended environmental parameters for the operating rooms and uh, how you go about the environmental surveillance in the operating rooms. If you look at the source of the surgical site pathogens, infection pathogens, one source is the endogenous flora of the patient about which we cannot do anything much. All of us have normal flora, so we cannot do anything much. The next thing is the operating theater environment about which we can take control. The third factor is the hospital personnel, the doctors, the nurses and the other staff who are in the operating room about whom also we have some control. And the fourth cause is the seeding of the operative site from the distant focus of infection. For example, a prosthetic device or an implant associated infection. This also can be taken care of by looking for distant focus of infection in the patient and treating it preemptively before a planned surgery. Now I go on to the structure of the theatre. Now the OT complex itself is divided into four zones, zone 1, 2, 3 and 4. The zone 1 is called the protective zone, means it is a restricted area. You have the recepting, uh, reception area, the waiting area where you keep the trolleys, the change rooms, uh, rooms for administrative staff, the conference rooms and all those things. They all come under the terminology protective area which is the zone 1. The zone 2 is a clean area. Now the zone 1 is not a ultra clean area or a very clean area but the zone 2 is a clean area which consists of the pre-operative holding area the post-operative holding area, the plaster room, the staff lounges and all those things. The zone 3 is the sterile area, the most sterile area which consists of the operating theatre, the scrub rooms, the anesthesia room and the setup room. The zone 4 is the unsterile area which is the disposal area where you have the dirty utility, the disposal uh, where you dispose the things from each OT and the corridor leading on to the disposal zone. So all this is the zone 4. Now is there a requirement for modular OTs? You know modular OTs are those OTs which are prefabricated and then brought in and fitted. Just like we have modular kitchens, we have modular OTs too. But modular OTs are not a mon mandatory requirement. The type A, the, the OTs are divided into type A and type B. The type A OT are the super speciality OT which requires a little bit more stringent uh, the, uh, environmental conditions and uh, the type A OTs are the OTs where you perform neuros, uh, neurosurgical procedures, the orthopedics, the cardiothoracic and the transplant procedures. The type B OTs are generally denoted as the general OTs where all the other basic surgeries are done, the ophthalmic surgeries are done, the daycare surgeries are done. So these are the type B OTs where the conditions probably are less stringent, less stringent than the type A OTs. Now the most important thing inside an operation theatre is a dust free environment. Whether it is the floors, the walls, the ceilings, the windows, the lamps, chairs, name it inside the theatre, everything should be dust free. The sinks, the tabletops, even the computers and other things that you have. Uh, the phones that you have inside the theatre, any surface inside an operating theatre must be completely dust free, including the cylinders, the suction machines and everything else. So this is the, the, the OT must be so constructed that dust that does not enter any part of the theatre environment.